Hey y'all, thanks for checking in Euclid Mining. You know where we are. We are in crazy town. This is where I got my ASICs down here. Um, all I'm doing right now, and I only have a couple of them down here hooked up. Uh, not everybody's up and running. I finally got the power, but I'm still doing some changes. Uh, but today what we're gonna talk about is gonna be the cooler. You saw the other video with this one. Now I have a four inch hole on each side of this cooler and I have a hole on top. That's where the power wires come out and the power uh, unit will sit on top of this. That way it'll stay cool. Um, the problem was that when I had this hooked up with the duct work, it didn't seem like it was getting cool enough and it was overheating. So I kind of stopped that and am now revisiting it. I bought another cooler. What I wanted to do was cut six inch holes on either side and do a six inch exhaust and intake. Now, before I cut that one, I thought, well, this one's pretty much garbage to me because it didn't work the way I wanted it to. So I went ahead and I cut larger holes in it. I didn't think I was gonna be able to make them as well as I wanted to uh, without the hole saw being a six inch, but it seems like it worked out pretty well. So before I go ahead and chop that one up, I went ahead and I figured why not chop this one a little more because what good is a whole cooler with four inch holes on either side, right? Um, or at least my wife didn't see the, uh, <laughs> the desire to keep it. So what I did was I went ahead and cut six inch holes. <laughs> I got six inch exhaust. Uh, we're using that upstairs for the grow tent, so I had some left over. It was insulated. I pulled it out of the insulated um, sleeve because, you know, right now for just testing, I just want to see if it works. Later on, I will buy more if it works because it will um, insulate the uh, exhaust and it will muffle some of that sound of the fans being right next to the back of the cooler and near the front of the cooler. Those fans are going to be right up in the front and the back. So there will be some noise just outside of it. That way with the insulated one, um, it'll muffle it a little bit better. But for, for, for just testing, we're just, I, we're just gonna do that. I'll buy more of it. Uh, I think 25 feet of this insulated. Um, you can see the box over there. Uh, I believe it was about, oh God, about 70 or $75 for that. So um, not super cheap, um, but I think uh, may be necessary, but we're gonna find out. If this works, I may try to stuff it back in here and test it that way. But when I'm just trying to hook this up, it's, it's a little bit of a pain to stuff that into the hole. So anyway, I went ahead and I cut the holes. Now you can see this hole isn't as pretty as the original four inch hole because I had a four inch hole saw. This time, because I didn't have a six inch hole saw, I just cut it with a, uh, um, uh, a razor knife. Uh, pretty standard, you've seen these. Um, usually use them for like sheet rocking and stuff uh, or splitting wires so uh, I went ahead and I did that and I did it on both sides so I'm gonna go ahead and um, hook these hoses up to both sides and I'm gonna take these cones off of here now these are five inch fans so the idea is that this will go completely over the fan and encapsulate it so that way it'll have maximum uh, draw or exhaust when it comes time. Sorry guys, it's a little loud in here. You know I got the other stuff running um, and they're, they're, not, they're not quiet. But I'm doing this out in the garage and uh, that's what I'm at. So let me go ahead and take these cones off of both sides because I'm not going to need it. And then I will um, I'll put this inside of the cooler and uh, we'll go from there. So I'll be back. Alright y'all, so when it rains it pours. Uh, we got the lawn guys outside. I got the garage door open because um, it's not a whole hell of a lot of light in here. So uh, anyway, let's try to get through this. I've got the exhaust set up here. I've got the exhaust back here. What I have is the L3 Plus Plus in here. I've got a, um, this is a bracket that you use for like duct work. Um, it's a six and a half inch ring. So I just put it around here and then you tighten the screw to make it get smaller. So it's nice and snug. I only had one. So I went ahead and I just put some uh, zip ties. I connected two zip ties together and I just zip tied that around there. But for the most part, uh, this is pretty much it. Uh, I had to use a little wood to uh, raise it up a little bit so that it was level with the exhaust so that it is straight as could be. Now this is not very rigid, as you can see it uh, hangs down. So I am gonna leave this up on the uh, workbench 
That way it'll be straight as can be to man, you know, maximize and make sure that the airflow is as open as it can be. Um, let's see, let's see. I think that's about it. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take the power supply, like I talked about, and I will feed the wires through the hole. They will connect inside, that way the power supply will uh, stay outside. It doesn't make enough noise to matter. Even if the fan um, is blasting, it's really not much at all. And it never really does. It, it, it never has gotten loud that I've even really heard it. Um, you know, obviously the dominating sound is the, is the ridiculous minor um, fans. So um, somebody who comes up with a new fan idea uh, will become a bazillionaire, I am sure. Uh, for people who live at home who like to mine and have wives that get. So let's move on and get these wires installed here. And I'm gonna feed those through. And once I do that, I will be back and show you where we're at. All right, y'all, we are, we are hooked up, we are ready. I've got the exhaust set up here. I've got the intake here. Put a little extension cord underneath there just to prop it up so it didn't um, uh, have a bend in it or anything. I want it to be as straight flowing as it could be because I didn't want to come down here and be like, well, maybe it's bent and maybe it's this. And this way I know that it is perfect. Uh, inside, I'll pop that open for you. You can see in here, it is set up. Now I will say that the volume is what sold us on this to begin with. When I started doing this, uh, my wife and I were out here and it was loud, just as loud as it is now, obviously you can hear all that noise, but when we had this hooked up inside here, it was like we were talking over maybe a, uh, a TV, uh, just a regular TV being on. So um, it was nothing compared to what it is now. And you didn't have to raise your voice and almost shout to talk to each other. So um, I am really hopeful on this now, now that I've got the six inch, and like I said, the five inch fan inside. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video. We're gonna go upstairs and Start checking out some uh, some numbers and see what the heat's doing. So I will be back in a minute and I'll let you know. Hi y'all, we are upstairs in the mining exercise room cave and we are looking at some temperatures and let's see. So here's what we're looking for. Um, 60s are great <clears throat> in here. Um, 70 is probably like Okay, so 80 is critical. 80 is critical in this section, uh, the uh, PCB. Um, this is the, uh, the boards, the actual physical boards. And this other number, when it comes up, this is the chip temperatures. But this is the actual board. And past 80 Celsius on the boards, um, similar to like GPU mining, uh, is you know when things start to crack, melt, malfunction, um, and you know, catastrophic right so uh, if you know my gpus that i like to run i like to run everybody around 60 to 65 and right now we are running really smooth look at that we're getting 626 we do have this overclocked just a little bit um so uh it is running a little higher than the standard um but overall i mean when i look at 63 um for my high temperature, I am really excited uh, for getting this to work. Now we're only four and a half minutes in, so um, it's not much. So we gotta let this run a little bit and see what these temperatures do, but we are holding at 63, and that is an amazing temperature. So let's let this run for a while. I'm probably gonna let it run for like an hour, and I'll just keep checking in on it. And I'll be back in a little while, and we will uh, we'll see where we're at. All right, guys. So we're just uh, almost at six and a half hours that we've been running at now. And I'll tell you, uh, when I look at the temps, um, let's see when they pop up here. 64, 63, 62, and 60. I mean, that's exactly where I want to be. Uh, if you look at, like, say, something like the L3, its max temp would be, like, 80, and 85 is its critical. Uh, if you talk about, like, the L3 Plus and the L3 Plus Plus, 
uh, 85 is its like max, uh, 90 would be its critical. So, you know, when 85 is really the top number you'd really want to be at for any reason ever, um, you know, we're running at 64 is our max. So this worked out pretty well as far as I'm concerned. You know, so really a quick recap of what, what we had going on. We've got the cooler. We cut the six inch hole on either end of it. We put the six inch uh, uh, hose on either side of it. That was the insulated stuff. Like I said, I took the insulation off just to put it in there, uh, just to get it quick and dirty and just to get it going. Um, I did have to, um, because the curve of the cooler at the bottom, I did have to cut the hole a little bit higher. So I do have two um, uh, slats of wood underneath it, lifting it up just a little bit so it's more in line with the two holes. I took off those exhaust pieces that reduced down to the four inch. I had no luck with the four inch hole and the four inch exhaust. Um, it didn't do enough. It was overheating within, you know, a minute, a uh, minute and a half. It was already overheating. So the four inch was not it. I'll tell you the truth. In my opinion, those little reducers, they're good for nothing. Uh, I wasted my money on them. I thought, you know, in theory, the way they look, the, when they show you, I mean, it looks like it would totally work and the idea is sound. But I think that if you just had a cone that had the full five inch on it, just so it did have a cone, so you could put a hose on it easier, um, that would be probably the only thing. Um, you know, I just took the, uh, the, the conduit, the uh, hose on both sides, and it was a six inch and the fan is a five inch. So I just went right over top of it and then sealed around it. And it worked fine. At the top of the L3 Plus and the L3 Plus Plus, right in the front, there are holes in there where some heat does come out, but it doesn't seem like it's affecting it at all. There was such a minimal amount. Most of it, I'd say 99% of all that air is being forced through the fans. So when you look at yours, if you look at the uh, front where the air is coming out, there is a little slot where there are um, holes in there, but it doesn't seem like that affects anything. Um, you know, I'm still holding strong uh, at 625. I do have it overclocked, no less. So, I mean, I could feel like I could overclock this a little bit more and feel comfortable with the temperatures getting up to say 70. You know, I, I love to be at my number of 65 is like my sweet spot and to be at 64, I feel like I can push this up another uh, level on the overclock, maybe two more levels on the overclock. So. I'm going to try that out and see, but otherwise, right where it's at, it's running smooth. Um, you know, uh, I cut the hole in the top, pulled the uh, wires through it, pushed the internet uh, wire down through it, the RJ45, and, uh, and it's working good. Now, it's exhausting right into the garage. I don't have anything to go outside yet, and I am working on that, uh, putting something up on the wall so I can have some sort of exhaust um, for all of them, but... Uh, but for now, I haven't gotten that far. I've talked about it, but I haven't gotten there soon. I will. It's coming into wintertime here. So I'm not terribly, you know, uh, going forward too fast because I think it's going to be so cold anyway. I won't have to worry about much of it until spring again. So I do have a little time. But um, overall, uh, this is with the heat exhausting into the garage with, uh, I think I have four other units running. And it's still running at 64. So... Anyway, y'all, I appreciate you checking in. Um, I hope this was helpful. You know, in the end, six-inch exhausts on either side of a cooler. That was it. Uh, pull the exhaust right over the hose right over the fan. Tighten it up. And the sound is amazing. Uh, you can actually talk out there and, uh, and just talk and not have to raise your voice or even yell. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Give me a couple of those. Drop some comments below. Have you tried to use the cooler, uh, you know, to keep some sound down? I've seen some pretty elaborate designs out there with some crazy boxes built. And I'll tell you what, that cooler uh, originally when I bought it was like 23 bucks. Uh, the second one that I just bought because I thought I was going to do it again was I think it went up to like 28 bucks, but for 30 bucks. And if you just buy the hose that you need, probably another 10 bucks. Um, <laughs> You know, so for, you know, 40 bucks, you can take 75, 80% of the sound instantly uh, gone. So I appreciate y'all. Thanks for checking in.